I want to show you how to display Pascal's triangle using Python. So we're going to calculate and display Pascal's triangle using Python. So first of all, what is Pascal's triangle? Well, Pascal's triangle is a nice little shape of numbers. You got ones, and then you got a two, and then you got a three. So each number here is generated by taking the sum of the two numbers above it. So the outside edges are all ones, and then these numbers below it are the sums of the two numbers above it. So we're actually going to be writing it in a little bit different way. We're going to write it one, one, just one down the side, and then one, two, one, and then three, three, one. So we're going to be writing it kind of lopsided. And as we do this, we're going to look at it, and the first thing right here, we're going to say, this is row one. Row one. And then this column right here is going to be column one. So column one. All right. So just remember that as we do our calculations. So whenever we are adding things up, each number, for example, is two right here, is calculated um, based on the two above it, the two ones above it. So this number two would be in row three, column two. And in order to get that, it would be getting row two, column one, and row two, column two. All right. So now let's jump into some code. All right, I've created a, well, I've opened up Notepad++, and I'm going to do some editing. So first thing I want to do is I want to create a function that will return values. So I'm going to call this one um, Pascal Spot. And I'm going to assume we're going to pass in a row and a column. Now, if you remember, if the row and the column well, so if the column is column one, then it's on the left hand side and we're going to assume it's all going to be ones. So if our column is one, we are going to return a one. So if call equals one, we're going to return one. And that's pretty easy. Now, if our column and our row are the same, we want to return one as well. So row where else is it called call equals row return one so let's jump back to our diagram so we can see what that means so in this case this top one if the column and the row are both ones that's a one and if the row is two and the column is two then we get this number one right here so this is a two, two, and this one right here would be row three, column three. So this is a three, three. So if the row and the column are the same, we're going to turn a one. And if the column is one, we're returning one. Otherwise, we want to return the sum of the two above it. All right. So let's see, how do we do that? Well, well, let's calculate, let's figure out the two numbers. So the one to the upper left and the one to the upper right. So the upper left, well, is going to be equal to, we're gonna use this Pascal spot function again, and we're going to be passing it some numbers. We wanna pass it the previous row, so that'd be row minus one, and we wanted to pass it the column one to the left. So call minus one. All right. Now the one to the right is in the same column because these are diagonal columns, but it's still going to be the previous row. So up right equals Pascal spot. 
and this would be row minus one, and it'd be column. So these two will make up the two numbers I add together to get my number. All right, so I can just return that number. Return up left plus up right. So that's the function. All right, now I want to display this. Let's display the first uh, five lines or first, well, few lines. So four, let's do R in range. One, two, let's do uh, 10. So I actually only display the first nine of them because it doesn't actually count 10. And then we're going to do a four C in range one. And we'll do R plus one because we really do want to display all of the numbers in that row. And we're just going to do a print statement. Print Pascal spot. And we're going to pass it our row and our column. Now, if we were to do this right here by itself and print this out, it would just list a whole bunch of numbers. Let's go ahead and do that just for now, just to say see what that does. So we'll save that. And I'm going to save it in my desktop. And I'm going to go to um, there's a Pascal folder, and I'm going to call it pascal.py. I'm going to save the file type as a star dot star. So I save that. So now it's saved. You can see the syntax highlighting turned on. Now I go to this uh, prompt here, I go to the Pascal directory. Oops. Uh, I need to go to desktop first. Desktop. Oh. And then Pascal. All right, so I'm in this Pascal directory. Now, the directory listing, I can see there's this Pascal.py file. I'm going to run it. Pascal.py. And it prints out a whole bunch of numbers. And that's exciting. But Pascal's triangle isn't a whole bunch of numbers like that. It's formatted. So what do I do? Well, I want to not have all these new lines at the end of every line I print out. So normally the ending is a new line, but I can change the ending right here to be a space. So it doesn't print a new line. So save that and try running it again. Now it prints them all on one line. That's not quite what I want. I want them on separate lines. So let's try it again. This time, let's think about it. For every time I go, for every row, I want to have a new line at the end of the row. And for every column, I just want to have a space. So right here, this is what's happening for each column. I can tab in right here just one time, so it's in the same level as the second for loop and do a print with nothing in it, and it will print out a new line character. So I'll save that, and we should see Pascal's triangle displayed correctly. And there we go. It looks beautiful. Now I want to make a lot more lines because this is kind of small. Let's go up to 25, which is a little bit bigger than 10, 25, and let's print it out. I run it, and you can see something interesting. As it's calculating, it's taking a longer and longer for each line. And that's not really, I'm like, why does it take that long? It shouldn't take that long, right? It's just adding numbers up. Well, it's adding ones. That's all it can add up is ones. So when you get these really large numbers like uh, 1352078, well, that means that it has added up that many ones. And every single one of these things is a whole bunch of ones is adding together. So I want to not do that. But the problem is every time I run this Pascal spot, it forgets what it already knows. So let's give it some memory. So I'm going to create this memory object here. So memory equals, and I'm going to create a hash. So this is an associated array or a hash table. And now I'm going to look things up in that hash table. Well, how do I look it up? 
I'm going to create this index. So we'll say that the index is going to be uh, a tuple, and it's going to be the row and the column. And so if we pass this index in there, we should be able to get, we should be able to save numbers and then retrieve them later. So we're now we're going to check to see if there's something in there. So eh, let's put it a check up here. So if the index is in memory, then we want to, well, let's return, return memory. And what's our index? Well, it's our index right there. That looks good. So if it's in there, we return it. But there shouldn't be anything in there yet. So let's put things in there. Once we've calculated out our left and our right together, we are going to put it in the memory. So memory of our index equals our up left plus our up right. So we then create this index entry which is the row and the column, and it has the value of the row and the column. And the next time it goes to that same one, it can retrieve that one. Okay, let's try this out and see what happens now. We remember how slow it was last time. Now let's run it again. Boom, that was very quick. Because it doesn't have to go and recalculate all these numbers. It can just look at the numbers that are saved in memory, in this memory associated array. Hash table. Anyway, this is how you can do Pascal's triangle and how you can optimize it for much larger Pascal triangle triangles.